Happy Sunday. How you guys doing today? Welcome, welcome, welcome for another wonderful episode of The Laundry Room, where we air and share your dirty laundry. How you guys doing on this Sunday? How's your quarantine going? Don't get excited. I'm still going to put them glasses on. They're either going to be crooked or I'm going to be blind as a black Mary, okay? I'll give you guys a chance to join us on this Sunday. How's everybody doing? How's the music? Is it too loud? Is it too low? Okay, I'm missing all the waves, so I'm catching them now as they're coming in. Those of you guys who I've missed, I do apologize. Okay, I'm going to put these glasses on, y'all, because other than that, I ain't going to be able to see nothing at all. Bear with me, y'all. Today, I am doing blue in honor of a dear friend of mine whose life was taken from us on last week. And so his memorial is today and his birthday is today. And his colors were blue and black. So, forgive me as I get my aesthetic together here, you guys. Hey, Hunt T. Hey, Tiff. Hey, Mama. What's going on, Mother on the Move? Big boy did it. 411. That means he did it and he got the info on it. Mm, that's all about it. Wonder what's behind that name. So on this Sunday, we are paying homage to a dear friend of mine. His name is Orrin Bird. Today is his birthday as well, as well as a memorial. Um, last Sunday, unfortunately, he decided to leave us. Uh, you know, during this pandemic, people are experiencing all types of depression, all types of loneliness. And I'm not saying that he was depressed or he was lonely. I really don't know the ins and outs of the particulars in his um, situation. We had just gotten back in touch. We were talking, touch and go on IG uh, via DM. And he appeared to be doing just fine. Hey, 504 girl, 504 girl. Did I mess my girl name up? Hold on. This 504, don't ever get it wrong, baby. I'm sorry, girl, you know I love you. Um, but he appeared to be doing well. Um, he was in an electrician's program, and uh, the following day he was due to take finals. He was looking forward to finishing his program. Just had a new baby. Uh, baby O is eight months old. And so um, I don't really know what the particulars were behind the situation, but uh, quote unquote, it has been ruled a suicide. Uh, I believe it was foul play. If you knew Oren like I knew Oren, like that wasn't his way. But we never know what someone is experiencing in their alone time. Uh, we never know how things affect them in their lives and uh, what we go through that can, can affect us even. So I'm going to continue to give you guys a chance to um, log in, do me a favor, drop blue hearts for Warren. Again, his color was blue. So drop blue hearts, um, pay homage to his life. He was a wonderful young man. I met him in massage therapy school. And um, he reminded me so much of my son. He was like the older version of my son. I literally started calling him my son. And so eventually he got to come home and meet the family, um, as well as so many other classmates. And uh, yeah, it, it definitely is um, it's something to deal with. Um, I've dealt with suicide throughout my life with um, friends and family members. And um, it's never an easy thing to deal with. You're left with those questions as to why that individual didn't think of themselves enough or even you enough. At that point, you're being selfish as to know that what they were doing was going to be not only um, devastating to you, but so many unanswered questions. You know, people often, you know, threaten to do those things. And unfortunately, you have to take every threat every statement literally because you never know where a person's state of mind is you know you just never know i can remember um in 96 my stepfather told me uh that morning that he was taking his daughter and he was going away and i was like oh wait a minute hold on i was your daughter before you had a daughter you can't leave me behind where you going to florida him and my mom had a vacation home in orlando and so i naturally assumed that he was going to move to florida and so i told him Whatever you do, don't leave me behind. And um, Benassim, I know him. At the time, I didn't know that um, his mother had committed suicide 20 years prior to 
the date. And um, that day, for lack of better, better timing, uh, he decided to end his own life and take his three-year-old little girl with him as well. And um, I can remember just wanting to know why. I still cry. I still want to want to know why. He was a wonderful person, a great guy to know. I didn't understand it. I'll never understand it. So if there's anybody out there that is dealing with um, thoughts of harming themselves or the people around them, reach out to somebody. Somebody loves you. Even when you think you're at your worst, you're at the lowest of a low, there's somebody that'll love you past your pain. There's somebody that'll love you past your faults. There's somebody that God has put in place to love you. So don't sit at home feeling that way. Don't keep it to yourself. Reach out to other people. Reach out to your local uh, church. Reach out to your neighbor, a coworker, somebody, and let them know that you're not feeling so well and that you need some help. And even if you can't bring yourself to say you need some help, just say, hey, I'm not feeling so well. You know, life's afflictions can take a toll on you, and they can have you not feel so good. So... Without further ado, um, we'll start our segment. I have a wonderful, 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 wonderful uh, brown sugar mama coming to you guys today. She is from Louisiana, New Orleans. She is um, a black author. And not only is she a black author, she is on the bestsellers list. Now, let me tell you what's so phenomenal about that. She debuted her book in March of 2020. Now, Joyce Myers also dropped a book within two weeks of her book hitting the shelves. I think around the time Joyce Meyer's book hit the shelf, she told me she was about number 23. I could be wrong. She'll correct me when she comes in. And uh, the second day of it being on the shelves with Joyce Myers, she looked up and she was at number two and then looked up again and she was at number one. So she definitely has a backstory. I want you guys to take some time and hear her out today. Pick up the publication. It is one to read, you know, the aftermath of abuse. She's going to share with you some things. Um, you guys have any questions, feel free to bring them in. And then we're going to go into the fun part of our segment where we'll bring Ken in and we'll do a little commentary with him and we'll do our cash giveaway. Make sure you're paying attention. Take notes. You don't know what the trivia questions are going to be. You don't know what the scavenger hunt is going to be about. So keep your minds, your hearts, and your ears open and ready to receive this young lady. And without further ado, I will bring to you Alicia Nubian's wife. Alicia, you're on. You guys, show Alicia some love. Hey, so. Alicia. Alicia. Oh. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, doing wonderful. You look absolutely flawless. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, somebody's quarantining is going real well. <laughs> they kind of let us out a little bit over here. So um, I was able to kind of get out of, uh, for a little bit and get some stuff done like a haircut. But we ain't going to talk about it. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you know Mama over here is trying to keep it together, girl. We on lockdown in the shy. And they ain't following the rules. <laughs> well, that's why I'm locked up to my birthday. That ain't going to be cute, you know? I was like, I'm just gonna get there. <laughs> don't start. Don't start. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm glad it don't come in stages. I'm glad it stays the same all the time. Yes, Lord. <laughs> if it didn't go, yeah. Thanks, big it ugly. <laughs> well, without further ado, please introduce yourself to my audience. We are ready and willing to receive you. Hear what you got to say on this Sunday? Oh, well, I am Alicia White. Um, I am from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, I'm a black author. I'm a mother. I'm a survivor. I'm an activist. All of that wrapped up in one. Yeah, that's all who I am. <laughs> so Okay, okay. Well, you know, I'm a survivor, too. You know, I hold pom-poms for me and mine. So if you've been through anything, it doesn't have to be public. If you made it through, then you're a survivor, too. Definitely. Most definitely. So now, tell us about this book. Now, I met you, for those of you guys who are just joining us again, we are with Alicia Newbins White. She is a best-selling author on Amazon and Kindle. Yes. She has written the book, The Aftermath of Abuse. Yes. And she was kind enough. Go ahead, show them the publication, okay? So this book is The Unspoken Truth, The Aftermath of Sexual Abuse. Um... In the book, I talk about all the stuff 
that everything your mama said, what goes on in my house, stays in my house. Well, guess what? I aired all of our dirty laundry. Sorry for the people that got stepped on. I apologize beforehand but it was what it was what i did was just told the truth because what i understand is is that if i don't speak the truth if you don't speak the truth guess what that means somebody else gonna go through it and ain't gonna know how to uh, handle the truth amen amen definitely you know telling everybody like we gotta read the book i talk about a little bit of everything um it's it's not a you know it's not a huge read um most of my my followers have said they finished the book in a day or so and um i mean which is great because once you pick it up you, you're gonna stay in it absolutely absolutely yeah and it's gonna peel back some layers now those of y'all that have been had some things that you've been through that you may not have spoken openly about, that you may not have had the proper counseling about. Right. It's going to peel back some layers. There are going to be some things that you're going to be able to identify with, mm -hmm. especially if you've been through some things. And if you're next to somebody or even around somebody that's mm -hmm. experiencing some things, right. it's a real eye open. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to bring light to some things that we really just don't want to talk about. And then when you say um, those things are going in your mama's house, they stay in your mama's house, can you... Can you kind of give us, you don't have to give us what's in between the pages, but just give us a synopsis about how you feel about that. Okay, so my thought process about, you know, the what goes on in your house, stays in your house. I mean, when you hold that stuff in for so long, especially in the African-American, you know, it's been our culture that we keep stuff inside. We know that, you know, um, African-American women are high on the list of having heart attacks. That's because we hold all that stuff in you, you know. And so that's because if I don't tell you what happened with me and how I actually was able to get over it, then you're going fall apart if it, if it knocks on your door and so in the book I talk about you know um, I was molested at the age of 11 um, parents pretty much just like left me at home for the very first time and my uh, one of my uncles molested me and so I talk about like I take you through a journey and it's not all gory and I mean but it will you know it's it's a definitely an eye-opener it definitely you know walks you through that process of what happened um, and all of the things that happened after because that's so important um, to build up that good support system which I had to do you know, I had to come back and reestablish and confirm myself. Like, who who are you? You know, um, and and definitely um, the book actually talks. Well, let me just let me just make this clear. The book, even though I start off with sexual trauma, this book is for everybody. It's not just one. You know, we're not just. I'm not just talking about sexual trauma. I'm talking about relationships with your mama. You know, broken relationships, mother mother and daughter are relationships which is something I work very, very hard to, you know, make sure that I have with my girls. But I didn't have that initially. And so I'm finding out more and more every day that that is definitely something that is going on is happening all the time. And so we talk about suicide, all that, because I went through probably all of, you know, the different things that you, that a, a survivor go through, everything but promiscuity. So that was the only thing that I really didn't have, but the rest of it was definitely spot on. Um, it, I really had a troubling past, but I'm here. I'm a survivor. I'm blessed to say I've made it on the other side. I wrote the book because I want people to know that just because something has happened to you does not mean that that has to define you. Come on. Absolutely. That's what Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just a part of your journey, a pit stop along the way. A reminder of what not to do or what to look out for. Most definitely. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, growing pains don't feel good. They're called pains. They stretch you out. Yeah. You know, um, if they were going to feel good, they'd be called grow goods and everybody would be looking for them. <laughs> so um, we appreciate you sharing that part of your journey with us. Um, now, you said you really didn't have a good support system along the way. Um, throughout experiencing the things that you experienced. Yeah. Were there any vices that you picked up along the way? What did you use? Was it self-medication? Was it friendship? Um, for me, believe it or not, um, I like, I, I, I was never really promiscuous, but I like to drag, I, I like to be, you know, kind of, kind of sexy with my moves. You know, I think that, um, 
have a pleasant aesthetic to the eye. So for me, it was the I was addicted to being cute. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I got addicted to the way that I looked. I couldn't go to the store. My stepmother told me one day I had a diva tattooed on my stomach. Um, okay. And uh, one day she sat me down. She said, I just want to tell you. She said, Ms. Diva ain't no friend of mine. I said, what do you mean? And she said, you can't go to the store without your hair being done, without your hair being done, without being dressed to a T. You can't be seen in the same thing twice. And I'm still kind of like that about not being seen in the same thing twice. But what she shared with me was I was being superficial with myself. Not so much with other people, but I was being disingenuous to myself and setting a bar that was so high that I would only come crashing down within myself. Yeah. So for me, that was my addiction. And and for you, did did you pick up anything along the way? Um, I I did. I, I picked up um a whole lot of trust issues. Like there was nobody that was good enough to be in my circle. It was my circle. Uh, I was in it. It was me, myself, and I, and I was okay with that. Um. I'm, I'm no longer like that, but at one point I was. It was just like, you know, I mean, because at any given moment, I would probably have flashed out, you know, done whatever. Um, because the, the few times that I let people in, um, you know, I, were, I was hurt. Um, the uncle that um, actually molested me was my favorite uncle. And so you could just imagine, you know, as, as an 11-year-old kid going to school and um, getting a question right at the school. I can't wait to run home and tell my uncle. I can't wait to tell him how my day was and all that stuff. And then the one person that I thought cared enough about me, cared the most about me to come and see me on a daily basis was the same one that walked in to my living room and walked away with all of my dignity. Um, my all, my everything. And so because my parents were not at home at the time, because that was my very first time ever being left alone, it, it it made me pick up trust issues to the point to where I didn't even like really trust um, even my, my mom and my dad. Like I mean, my support system. Like I mean, what, how am I trust y'all? You know, you you broke that. You, you messed that up. You you left me. I didn't have any directions, no instructions as to what to do while I was left alone. And so you know, um, that that's pretty much what I picked up. Like I just got to be by myself. Got to do it. So do you have anything that you want to share with our viewers that they should be looking out for with their children? Most definitely. Those things that, that are done in secret because we want to we want to go beyond the veil of the secrets of abuse. We want to talk about those things that lead up to allowing those types of things to occur. Yeah. In the home, out of the home. Yeah. I would definitely say um, for me, this, this was a, a, a key moment for me. Um, what happened is I'm a child of four. My, my parents had four children, was four of us. And of the four of us, that particular uncle only came to visit and spend time with me. So there were three other children there. If you find that any adult is paying that much, that close of an attention to one of your children, you know, um, I, I had a, a situation where even with my baby girl, um, there was a guy that lived next door to us some odd years ago, um, came and knocked on my door and he was like, you know, hey, I bought baby girl a bag of chips. Well, you know, my, my flags got the wave and everything was going off because you got to think about it. What makes a grown person sit and say, I got to go and take one child a bag of chips? But what would make a grown-up say that if they're not sick, if they're not, like, what, what, how does a grown-up get that close to just one child? Now, I have three children of my own, so that was like trying to repeat the cycle, and I wasn't just, I wasn't going to just let that happen, you know what I'm saying? Like, the enemy ain't going to strike twice in this family, the devil is alive, so I didn't give it no power. I was just like, you know, no, sir, these are your chips, you can take these, you know, and, and some other stuff kind went along with that but um yeah it, it wasn't happening my I, I definitely encourage people to make sure that you are encouraging positive relationships and giving your kids the, the you know the type of attention that they need so they don't have to look for that elsewhere 
because he validated me like he was my all in all and so at school when I couldn't wait to run home and tell my most you know my, what happened to me that day I should have been running and tell that to my parents but apparently I was connected to him and something you know in that type of a way so I would definitely say yeah pay close attention to who you allow into your circle because what people do not realize is 90 percent of people that are victimized or about people that they know absolutely 10 percent is victimized about people that they don't know and so that's a huge number when you think about it you know 90 percent totally yeah. now for me what i would like to add to that um children playing behind closed doors oh yeah blankets sleeping bags tents any area that it where your vision is impaired yes um your children should be playing with an earshot if they're not visually in front of you and then you should be checkpointing with your children every so often and you should have conversations with your children about good touch bad touch how they should or should not be handled with or without family and especially when going to the bathroom in public places and things of that nature um there are so many ways that predators um prey on children and adults as well don't get it twisted um abuse is not applicable to an age group it's applicable to people yes you know so it's not just children that are preyed upon it's adults as well but a predator knows is prey a mile away yes. so you have to make sure that you are not giving off the wrong signals okay. make sure that your children are being cared for properly I know in this day and age where we have so many single mothers out here working yeah. and child care is scarce and oh but my neighbor's just always right there that just may not be the place for your child to be so make sure that you guys are paying attention to the signs and symptoms bedwetting finger sucking sometimes anything uh, finger sucking is a sign of insecurity yes. you need to figure out what the insecurity is bedwetting is normally a sign of abuse of some form yes. so those are some things that i've learned around along the way um i'll even go beyond the veil and say i wet the bed as a child um and i am one too that was abused so these are things that um people ordinarily don't want to share um about themselves or their children you know everybody is worried about people judging them yeah. but in this day and age where abuse is so prevalent and it is um something that's being dealt with on a daily basis we just need to just be honest with ourselves and with each other that's and uh, share with each other what we've been through what we've experienced those of our educators who are um dealing with our children on a regular basis yeah. who have um, been educated um, the right way in these areas need to be sharing with parents, neighbors, and friends the signs and symptoms of abuse as a whole, not just sexual. We're talking visual. I mean, I'm sorry, not visual, verbal, mental, and physical as well. Um, and there's some other things that you talk about in this book as well. You want to give us a little bit more tea? A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. It, it, so I, I talk about a whole lot of stuff. Um, I know today um, you dedicated the show to your friend. Um, suicide is one of the things that um, is also um, near and dear to me because my support system um, was broken down. Um, I was very suicidal. Um, just wanted to completely check out um, because not only did you know my support system they knew what had happened because of course i i said something the exact same day however no one came back to re you know to uh affirm me nobody came back and said hey you know i love you i'm here if you ever need to talk i didn't have that and so you know it's like okay i got all these emotions i got everything going on and happening on inside of me but as a kid i don't know how to you know, ex properly expressed. And so instead, you know, it turned into, you know, bad behavior, um, drinking, being angry and, and full of rage, wanting to yeah. fight everywhere I went, uh, you know, wanting to fight. I mean, I don't know at what age, probably 12, was just drinking. You know what I'm saying? And if I didn't have alcohol, I would actually, <laughs> I'm going to say this, and I don't want none of y'all doing this, okay? But I'm going to say it. Um, 
I found out that NyQuil was a form, you know, has alcohol in it, which is now why when you go and purchase it, they ask to see your ID. It has alcohol in it. Um, I found, I learned that the hard way because I realized that it would do the same thing for me um, as when I would drink regular alcohol like liquor. And so I would literally sleep with the NyQuil bottle up under my pillow because those are the times when, you know, in the middle of the night when you got, you know, reoccurring dreams or you just can't sleep because your mind is wandering. You just, you know, just can't get it right. You can't focus on your your um your schoolwork and you know, it was just it was hard, you know, um, because at eleven, I mean, you you really still like a baby. So I I mean I go I went to school and I lived in a um, a small town at the time when it happened. And so everybody knew and so even the children. So of course, I would get, you know, questions that I, I just didn't know how to answer. And so that just made life for me just unbearable. And so suicide also, you know, it did play a huge part in my life. I just wanted to check out because I didn't know how to handle it. That's why it's very, it's imperative that if someone has gone through any type of trauma, not just sexual trauma, but any type of trauma, we, we need some help, you know. Uh, we, we need to know that we that somebody out there have our back, understands us, and is going to be there no matter what, even when we are acting out and full of rage and anger and all that stuff. We just, you know, we, we need a support system. We need to, that shoulder, so to speak. Absolutely. So for you parents that are listening, um, she, she shared something that's very key. She said she was angry. Yeah. And then she did a lot of fighting, and um, I can testify to that. Um, you, do, you, 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 you are your anger. Yeah. You want something and somebody to stand up for. Yes. So you look for a fight with somebody because nobody stood up and fought for you, or you didn't feel protected enough. Correct. Correct. And so, at any cost, when somebody looks like, or, or even feels like yeah. that they're saying something or doing something that's not right, yes, you're on them. You know, uh, what advice would you give to those without a solid support system? Uh, that's my, my baby, Tiffany. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Hey, Tiff. Um, I would definitely give, um, I would definitely say um, you need to find, you know, need to just seek help. Whether that be, you know, at a support group or, you know, whether that have to be in a friend, you have to, you, you have to have some, you, it, it's a, it's imperative that you begin building your own support system. That, that to me was one of the things that I had to do. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I ended up turning to God because I was just like, there's nobody here on this good green earth that's going to help me. I was young. I didn't have anybody to go to. Um, I wasn't able to get out and move around. We didn't have no hotline numbers that I could call. I mean, we have all that kind of stuff going on now, but I didn't have that initially. And so I had to try and figure out, you know, how do I how do I build myself my support system? You know, and so it, it's sometimes you know rather difficult, but it's it's worth it in the long run because you need it. You gonna definitely need. Absolutely, I would agree. Um, your first step would be God. And then um, okay. if it isn't somebody that you can trust, yeah, there's got to be somebody you can talk to, even if it's a stranger. Correct. Um, you'd be surprised. You can meet the, the, the most beautiful people yeah. through just speaking to people that you don't know, sharing how you feel. Correct. The internet is, internet is a wonderful place for communication. Okay. Um, you have counselors that are online for free. Yes. We have people that you can talk to who never have to see your face, never have to know your name, yes. but can be a support system for you in your time of need. But in a time of trouble, God is always, always, always your constant resource um, in your start, your middle, and your ending. Right. Uh, make money e Brown. It's hard to find the right support system. Trust is the key. Hey, hey. Yeah, that's true. But when you got a support, you got when you got a trust issue. Yeah. Then the next question is, where do you go with your trust issue? Yeah. So for me, um, who I'm working through trust issues, I'm a whole lot further along than I was in 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 prior times. Right. Um, when you don't trust, it's hard for you to even give a person 
your entire story because you don't trust them yeah. with the information. Right. When you've been misappropriated in, in, in life, it doesn't have to be sexually, period. It could be on your job. When you're misappropriated, it creates a trust issue. And so now you are leery of what information you divulge to people and how you divulge it and who you divulge it to. So trust issues are... are are a challenge in any any form of healing. They really are. Yeah. It's imperative for you to learn how to rebuild trust. And unfortunately, you're going to find that out by being being hurt, um, giving your trust to the wrong people, yeah. uh, giving your information to the wrong you know the wrong people, having things misappropriated. Um, it's a trial and error situation. It is. It, it most definitely is. Um, that was a very, very um, powerful statement you made, Ebony. Um, trust issues for me, um, because I felt like I just couldn't trust anyone, I, I just, I went to God and just allowed him to lead me to, you know, to the place to where I can, you know, be able to step out of my own way. Because sometimes as a as a survivor, we, we're so angry, we're so mad, like, I don't want to talk about it and I don't want to do this. I mean, but I definitely, even in the book, I talk about, you know, be honest. Say today is not, you know, it's just not a, it's not a good day. Like, I'm not having a good day. And you don't have to know why you don't have a good day. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, I, I'm just not feeling it today. And that's okay to say. I, I'm not keeping it today. You know, and so um, I will definitely say seeking prayer um, and, and getting yourself, you know, aligned in some some type of religious aspect um, will be a way, of the, way to, a better way to go um, so that God can help you to find your, your stance. Uh, Pink Fox says, especially when they use it against you and claim that they love you. <laughs> and that does happen oftentimes. We uh, oh, yeah. we go beyond the veil with people. Um, we let people in too quickly, you know. The Bible gives us um, actually the steps for friendship. Yes. You have the outer court, the inner court, the holies of holies, and then beyond the veil. And what that means is you don't put people beyond the veil immediately. You learn people, you see where they are with you and where you are with them before you start to divulge things. Because everybody that smiles with you ain't smiling at you, and everybody that's laughing with you ain't for you. So you have to be careful. And again, it's trial and it's error. You don't get a handbook how to be a good person. You don't get a handbook um, how to be a good friend. You learn those things by what you experience or what you see in observation with other people. So again, I would tell you to keep your eyes and ears peeled at all times and um, keep your heart open. What's done from the heart reaches the heart. Um, and that'll help you. Discernment comes with all packages. And what I mean by that is God sent us all here with a little indicator. And it's called discernment. It will kind of let you know who's good for you, who's bad for you, when to make a move, when not to make a move. Right. Um, some people call it your intuition. Yes. Um, but don't second guess yourself. Second guessing yourself normally lands you in a pile of, of um, yeah. like manure that you really didn't want to waddle in, right. for lack of a better term. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I strongly agree with that. Um, Pink Fox says I had a hard time with that with my parents out of all people. Um, sometimes um, as parents, and I know even for myself, um, we tend to always just be in parental mode. And so it's not something that, you know, we set out to do. And I mean, I would definitely tell you if you have a child that or if you are a victim of um, if you've been a survivor and your parents were not, you know, weren't on board with you initially, you, you really will have to give them a pass. I will definitely tell you that me and my mom now have one of the best relationships, but I was angry with her. I was definitely angry with her in the beginning because um, she actually was the one who left us alone. Like, we were there with her all the time. And 
so she actually was the one who got up and left that particular day and I'm sitting there and I'm so angry with her and as I began my healing process you know God showed me this and he told me he said everything that you get on God's good green earth whether it be hair whether it be clothes whether it be makeup whatever it comes with an instruction manual other than a child and so it's going to be trial and error you just kind of got to trust the process I absolutely forgive my mom I absolutely forgive her today for not being there when I needed her but I will say this um, the enemy didn't just steal from me he tried to steal from her as well because she never sang she she said she was going out to prior rehearsal and um, she never sang in the prior uh, again after that so he, he I mean you have to know that the enemy is very strategic in what he does and so and I know as a child I was definitely like I, I don't understand it but now that I'm a parent I fully understand that so it, it's just time you know time does heal some wounds I will say some <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, Tony, I don't mean to disrupt your comments here, but um, this young lady um, is near and dear to my heart, um, Tony Taylor. She was the neighborhood's mom. She was the mother in the neighborhood that did all the back to school picnic parties, didn't ask nobody for a quarter, provided all the school supplies, took us on. We had neighborhood trips. Um, she would rent a bus and, you know, as long as you had your $25, you know, you could go. And she lost her son. Um, April the 29th, I want to say, to be exact, of 2019, who happened to be, though we're close in age, was still considered my godson. And to have her on here is really an honor. Um, she's a god friend a woman. She's always got something going on and quite busy herself. Okay. And so, um, though we were talking about suicide and abuse, I just want to take a moment to pay homage to her. Her love for children, her love for our neighborhood, and just show some love for her. This has really been a rough, a real rough year for her. Okay. Um, Anybody know Tony? Know Tony loves her kids. Okay. If you didn't, if you didn't see Tony, you didn't see her kids. If you didn't see her kids, you didn't see Tony. Because that's how they roll. Okay. That's how she is. You're gonna see her with her children. So you know, you guys drop some hearts, show us some love, love on her. Um, she already knows. She already knows. She can preach this. She can preach this show down right now. So we don't have to tell her that God is the beginning and the end because she can tell us. Um, she's a living testimony of how good God is. And so you guys just show her some love. You know, pray for her, her family, my little brother Tristan, her sons, um, DeAndre and Jalen, and Shanita and her girls, Troy's wife and his two daughters. You know, the Taylor family as a whole took a hit big time last year. Our neighborhood. Um, where I come from, you know, we could talk about each other, but you better not say nothing because we coming for you. Um, we tight like that. You know, I grew up in a neighborhood where I can honestly say we may have, there's an apartment building on Hofstede. Well, make a long story short, it's all homes. But you best believe we all knew each other and the kids that came in and out of those homes and our neighborhood as a whole, and we have really taken a hit with our children um, in the last couple of years. So keep all of my neighborhood families, um, the Washington Ray family, with the loss of my other guy, son, Kawan, and the West of Parker family, with my other guy, son, um, Rakeem. It's just been a bit much. Show some love for my mothers who are uh, missing their children. Yes. Um, who did everything the right way. Right. Who didn't have abuse come to their homes. Not that our mothers didn't do the right things or our fathers didn't do the right things. Sometimes we go through things not for us, but so that we can help others and so that we can recognize what's going on so that the abuse can stop. So just show some love for my mothers. I appreciate that. Um, we're going to go into some other things in this segment. Um, we've talked about abuse. We've talked about some of the signs of abuse. Uh, we've talked about the hush don't tell. We've talked about how traditionally in African-American families, when things go on, there is that shh, don't tell nobody because we don't want anybody to know. We don't want people to look at our families indifferent. We don't want people to look at our children as if they're damaged goods or damaged products. But what happens when we do that is we grow up with adults that are compartmentalized emotionally who are not whole, who do not have the emotional wherewithal to function properly 
And then we turn around and we re-victimize them by labeling them as damaged goods, unusable, or oh, she got a problem, he got issues, all she want to do is fight, she stay drunk, she smoked too much weed. Well, I'm just here to tell y'all, I smoked a lot of weed. <laughs> In case y'all didn't know that, y'all know y'all ain't got to ask nobody. <laughs> you heard it right here, live in stereo. You know, each week I got to add a little something, something. So, you know, there's one to grow on. It's legal now, so, you know, I don't have to hide. I was hiding. We ain't got it, we ain't got it legalized here, so, I mean. Oh, that's fucked up! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, please. Because it's legal in Illinois, honey, and I'm telling you, I aged about 10 years running from the police in my own damn car, smoking my own damn reef because it was illegal. Yes, Lord. Yes. yes. And, and Lord, I'm a work in progress for those of my saints that are on the line. I know y'all love me, but y'all know God will meet me right where I am. And God has to use those of us who have not quite gotten it all the way together to pull some other people into the fold. So okay. don't judge me. You know, <laughs> yes, Lord. Yeah, but listen, we have a. You laughing at me, Tiffany? I see you over there giggling, giggling. Giggle. <laughs> you was there. You were there when I took my first hit off the marijuana. Why are you laughing? In the back of Stan's mama's house, with Shay trying to push my stomach in because I said I couldn't get high. Y'all talking about you ain't inhaling right? Y'all the reason why I messed up now. That's right. I'm telling on you, laughing. <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> Facebook and YouTube, that's right, all of them. I'm giving this all of them today. <laughs> all your business, yes. girl. You it to me. Yes, indeed. <laughs> girl, we got enough going on here in Louisiana without drugs. We we got enough. We got well, enough. Did she just call me? Wait a minute. First of all, I have a child that might be with earshot. Let's get this straight. Marijuana is not a drug. It is an herb. It comes from the earth. <laughs> well, it is not a mind-altering substance, though it may alter your mind. So I have to say, because my I see my child is on here. Kiki is on here. So I have to definitely say. Did I get you in trouble with the children? I'm sorry. I'm definitely going to take my stance and say, hey, the Louisiana says no, it's not legal. So yeah, it's it's drugs here. It's drugs here. Thank well, you know what we going to do. You know, I don't have one of those big. But we're going to be. Okay. Most definitely. <laughs> Look at uh, Kashana say it's healing. Okay. We talked about this already, Kashana. <laughs> Shanna, I'm on your side, girl. I I'm on your side, girl. You know, they were waving. They were waving palm trees. But, you know, we don't know what they was burning in the trees. Um, they were saying Hosanna in the house. You, you see my daughter talking about, uh, ma'am, I'm legal. Like, you going to mess around and get get her. Make see, her I can't have baby, this, baby, baby. We <laughs> doing it for the bad one time. When this is over, that's still your mama, baby. I can't have you. <laughs> I can't have you. Correct. Yeah. And so I'm still that black mama from the South. Don't get it twisted. Oh. So let's just move on. <laughs> Oh, hey, you say you heard it right now. She said she ain't the man. Baby, you best take your take your smiling faces down and don't laugh that loud no more because you're going to cry later. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to get that one off to college. Like, I don't need nothing clouding your judgment. Like, no, you have, you have not got a diploma yet. You don't need to be puff, puff, give. It messed up the gray matter in your brain. Okay. That doesn't get replaced. I got lucky. Hold and even, it ain't even fully developed yet. So, yeah. Yeah, I got lucky. The Lord knew that I would have to go before you guys later on in life. So, he preserved my mind as such. It doesn't, and I'm not trying to be funny. It's a rarity that people um, don't lose a lot along the way if you start smoking marijuana at an early age. So I'm not in by any man, any any means or any way suggesting that anybody that is not of legal age, not out of school, has not gotten themselves established in life to be doing anything other than picking up a book. Yeah. Okay. Don't do what I did. Mean. Don't do what I did. Mean. So you, you see what you got me? Hello, Netflix, two times. Right. <laughs> right, right. Yes, Lord. So, yeah, we we not we not going. Yeah. Okay, so we have found out that she is not one for the greens. Though some of us use it for medicinal uses, me 
personally, I just like to do it. Um, but that's not something that she is co-signing on anybody's deal. Don't get it twisted. We are airing, sharing dirty laundry, but she is not putting it in the spare fighter, okay? She's on that one and I'm not, out to dry. I'm not, I, I'm at a no judgment zone, but uh, <laughs> did, did say books before bloods? Oh. <laughs> oh my God, books before bloods. I, listen, hey, most definitely. I mean, I don't think you should be even think. First of all, you know, if you are fresh out of high school trying to get yourself into college I, I know you ain't got the funds so hey you don't need to be thinking about spending money on some marijuana leaves like I need you to get you together and be about my father's business first because I, I mean he the only one going to help you get through college because mama don't say hey I've taken you as far as I can take you the ride is ends here because I got oh my yeah, I got two more I got to get through college. So, yeah, most definitely. I'm like, you know, I'm not going to co-sign on, on that. And I'm not in a judgment zone. I'm just saying. That ain't. Well, baby, I told my son he either had to go to college or he had to go to the service. But on graduation day, we were not having a party. We were having to put you out the house party. And what I will say is, he took me seriously. And it's so funny because uh, we were cleaning out his room the other day. Uh -huh. Yeah, he gone, but I still go through his stuff here in my house. As long as he there, I will be okay. in his shit because I got to make sure he's okay. And so he still got the brochures for the service. And I'm like, what are you doing with those? He was like, I got options. And I was like, oh, okay, as long as Donald Trump is the president, you ain't got no options. You better figure out what you're going to do because um, that's not an option. Okay. So it's funny. Um, what we say to our children when they're really small sticks with them. And though we may say it jokingly, yeah. some of those things resonate with them um, as they grow. So you guys, make sure you're listening to your mom. Um, she's been through a lot. She's sharing those things with other people. But you know firsthand because she's told you these things long before now. Uh, Brad, what is it? Brad, Brad Kodak Clark. Um, I pinned his comment to the screen. I thought it was really beautiful. It says, trust is a God kingdom future. Faith is built. Keep stepping out there and don't lean on your own understanding. God will catch you, catch you every time. The real high is in his presence. Boy, now look here. You don't even know yeah. what you're saying because you wasn't on the phone earlier. You don't know what I'll say. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and leave that right there on the screen because you are truly spiritual yeah. and you are on point. Um, lean on to your own understanding. Yeah. God's ways are God's ways are ingenious and his methods are assured. You never know what God has in store for you. Just, definitely. just ride it on out. <laughs> Ride it on out. Thank you guys for tuning in too. Um, those are my that's my sister and brother, um, Brad and Claudia. Those those are my folks here. So I knew they I, I knew they'll come through. You know, with Kashari being on the live and and tagging with all these dead emojis, gonna get her but a whooping girl. You better leave that baby alone. Now I have another comment um, from uh, Damien. Sis, how do you deal with someone? I want, I, I'm assuming he left the who out, so I'm going to fill that in. Okay. Sis, how do you deal with someone who wants to sell their booty? Is it because they were abused? Uh, first and foremost, let's start here. Just because you were abused doesn't make you promiscuous. Yeah. Um, some people are abused, never ever have sex ever again in their lives. Some people who are abused turn to same-sex relationships. Okay. Some people who are abused are very close off sexually, period. And some people uh, choose to become promiscuous. Uh, that is a choice. It has nothing to do with being abused, not being abused, um, coming from a good home, coming from a broken home. It has everything to do with that person's choice. And if she chooses to sell her booty, yeah. um, now only you know, because you know the person in question and what you speak of, what the ins and outs of her life may or may not be. So if she's been abused, maybe that's a conversation that you and her can have. Yeah. But no, I wouldn't I wouldn't label someone who chooses to work in that field um, that they make that choice because they've been abused, okay? No, yeah. that's not what I'm going to agree with on today. 
I, I definitely agree with you, um, Javante. I think that um, in in regards to that comment, uh, that question, I think that you really do need to sit down and try to figure out where the person is coming from. Maybe they have been abused. Maybe they haven't. Um, it could be, you know, a mental issue. I'm going I'm to be honest. And, and I'm not saying that, oh, okay, they got to be crazy because they want to sell their body. You know, that's not what I'm saying. But definitely no one just desires to just say, I'm just giving my body away. Um, I know for me, I have counseled um, a, a couple of individuals that would tell me, you know, someone took my virginity, so it doesn't really matter. I just give it away. You know, um, that right there is a total different ball game. Um, they still definitely need to, you know, have someone in their, you know, in their corner. And if you are a part um, of her support system, um, I will definitely ask you to reach out to someone. You can actually reach out to me, and I can actually help you with that later on, um, Danny. And if you send me a, um, a a DM, I can I can help you with that. Um, but what I will say is, is that definitely that person will need some kind of um, counseling and just because I see you say she will not talk about it she may not want to speak to you um, because most of the time it's, it's very hard for a female that have gone through that to open up to a, a male and so she may be more comfortable talking to a female preferably someone who's gone through the same things that she has gone through or similar and so um, I would definitely say she she definitely needs some help but as a, her support team i would definitely say you can you can actually reach out and start trying to get some help for yourself so that you will be able to help her to heal that's what i'm saying so all right do we have any other questions I'm going to allow these comments, they move fast, sometimes they move slow. Yeah, I, I've been trying to allow them to load in, and in the meantime, we'll, you know, we'll continue yeah. to dialogue. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate, you know, it's it's a lot of men out here, too, that have been afflicted. Who okay. don't have anybody to talk to who are afraid to speak with someone because they're taught systematically that um, they're less of a man, or now they're a punk. Yeah, and you have some men that are abused by women. Don't get it twisted. You got a lot of these good-looking young dudes that these old Krugers, Jaguars, Tigers, yeah. Bears even, Bear Willis, whatever you want to call them, yeah. they hold to these babies and, and do some things that, that alters um, their idea of what a sexual um, encounter should be like. So it, it, it goes both ways. Um, making money, eat brown. Compulsive sexual behavior or hypersexual behavior can be triggered. But yes, if you seek counseling, you can be healed. Absolutely, absolutely. And then you got some people, believe it or not, you have some people that actually come here with um, overactive hormones. They do. We have a very high sex drive who actually have never experienced anything that was harmful. Who just, they call them nymphomaniacs. They do just like to engage in sexual behavior. Correct. Um, Black steak moan, the movie was a great um, analogy that kind of spoke to that type of a situation. So um, don't get it twisted. Don't be at home trying to diagnose people, okay? First of all, let's give the disclaimer that we did not did not give this week. We are in no way. No way. Counselors, psychologists, psychiatrists. We are humans who have a heart for human, who don't have um, a problem with sharing our experiences, giving a word of advice if you're willing to accept it. But we are not in any way trying to deal with these types of issues. We are just speaking to those um, those things to individuals that choose to dialogue with us. Okay. I think that may be Erica. How do you help someone who has been abused to trust their man and feel safe having sex in a relationship? That 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 is definitely going to come from... Um, just getting to know that person because I, I actually talk about that also in Unspoken Truth. Um, it was very, very hard for me some days to engage in sexual, you know, engage in sex even with my husband. But um, what he did was he had to really keep affirming me to say, you know, I got your back. When you feel comfortable, I think, you know, um, then and only then will you be able to open up and, you know, be in a, a 
healthy sexual relationship. But before then, I will definitely say work on you before you try to go in because you're only just going to bring toxicity to the relationship. That That's just bottom line with that. But that was a good question. I loved it. Loved it. But I do talk about that in the book. It's a whole chapter. Yeah, I don't have anything to add to that. Um, for me, <laughs> my experience was a little bit different. Um, for me, being abused as a child, my question, even as a child, was who did this to you? True. Somebody did this to you. So my concern was not for me, but for my, my, the other child um, that was involved. Who did this to you? Because they were a little bit older than me. But, you know, they were a teen and I was a child, but it was obvious that you don't come here knowing about sex. Correct. So somebody had to have done this to you, and that's why you're duplicating this behavior. And I wanted to go fight the person that did what they did to them, more so than being concerned about what was going on with me. So uh, emotionally, sexually, I've always been kind of solid and sound. It did not afford me the inability to connect um, on an intimate level. Yeah. Through the grace of God, it did not, um, it didn't cause that for me. So I can't speak to that side of it. I can only do what I just did, which is share with you what I did experience and how I dealt with it. Um, I understood that I couldn't allow it to keep me bound in any way because that's what people expect. You know, that's the one thing about being a warrior, as Lizette would say, my Lizette Martinez, I don't know if she's with me today, but um, she calls us warriors, not survivors. Yeah, um, I love it. I understood that people expect for you to be weak. They do. And they think that you cannot persevere. And so I spent the majority of my life fighting <laughs> the majority of the people that were trying to help my crazy ass. But I had a fight to not fail. Yeah. Like, you weren't going to tell me I couldn't do it. Because if you said I couldn't do it, I was going to show you I could do it 10 times better than you ever thought I could. And so to be hindered sexually would have been to let somebody win. And I I, I could never lose because I'm a winner. That's right. So I couldn't allow that to keep me from being able to have um, the intimate connection because God don't want me bound by nothing and nobody. Absolutely. You know, even in what I do, people don't understand. I curse, I smoke weed, I still drink, but I can give you Bible verses like... And she can. And people don't understand it and they be like, you can't do that, but I can. Because God says I can do it. He made me this way, perfect and just in my own way. You don't get to tell me how I display myself. You only get to decide if you're going to receive me or not. But you don't get to create me. So I understood that that was a part of establishing myself and taking my power back. So I never had that issue. Yeah. Through the grace of God. I hope that never happens because you never know. You know, things come up on you later on in life and you'd be like, what the hell happened? Yeah. And it was something you buried in your subconscious when you were six years old, seven years old. And now here it is, you're 40 and you're like, what? Where is this kind of thing? Right. So I, I, I say that with um, the grace and mercy of God on my side and praying that I never have those things occur. But um, that didn't occur for me. Thank God. Yeah, I kind of went through some, um, you know, some some challenges. Uh, oh, this is a good question. Girl, money, making money, E. Brown. Girl, that's my girl, Ebony. What is she saying? Let's see. Girl, she is cutting up. She said, what do you do if you've been in a marriage where sexual abuse was prevalent? How did you get past it if you decide to go into another relationship? Now, that's some tea, honey. I ain't got no tea, but I'm going to sip what I got. So, Ebony, I guess I need to get more information for this question so that I can be able to answer. When you say, what do you do if you've been in a marriage with sexual abuse? Like, do you mean like your partner was sexually abusing you? Do you think that's what she's saying, Javante? That could go a lot of ways because I didn't know if she was speaking to a past relationship, the current relationship, if that person had actually, because believe it or not, you have people that, um, in some states where um, the statue is um, not as high or it's lower, and they've actually dealt with people that were below the threshold, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
And so they may have come clear about that. So that could go a lot of different ways. But what I will say is um, we all fall short of glory. Um, if you if you if you live in a house that doesn't have glass windows, by all the sling rocks, motors, and sand, but well, we've all done something in our lives where we would like to have um, some level of of grace, mercy, and forgiveness. So um, I guess it depends on the individual in question. For me, mm-hmm. um, we would really have to talk about it. Yeah. Um, and what I mean by that is, um, we would have to really talk about the details of what it entailed. Uh, what it involved, who it involved, and we got 28 seconds left. We get ready to time out, you guys. Everybody that's with us, come back in. We're gonna go out. Okay. We're gonna come back in, and we're gonna continue to dialogue. We're gonna wrap things up with Alicia. We're gonna bring Kenny in. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna give away some money. So I hope you've been listening. Hope you got your scavenger hunt shoes on, cause we're gonna be out. All right. In five, four, three, two, one. And-